And then, if you're listening to this talk, then you should be at, at least a bit in small mode. Which is fantastic because there have been quite a few interesting developments over the past year or so. I'm Timothy, as you may have known from the last talk. And I'm also quite involved with your project. So I'd like to go through a few of those developments over the past year or so and give you a few hints as well as to what potentially lies around the corner with all of The starters, with slightly other more boring side, the largest thing that changed the project occurred with the housekeeping or organisation. The code base for the old project has actually shifted over from a self hosted dogs instance over to Savannah, which means it's now living right alongside the Emacs code base. This has been accompanied by the creation of a whole bunch of org related repos under Bastion org maintainers, a personal source has account. We've got the source of the website, the org wiki, org, as well as org contract. Another piece in addition to this uh, list of org related repos is the new org mode test um, continuous integration. Now, this is rather important because well, I do recommend that all contributors actually run make tests before submitting patches to the old project. This doesn't always happen. It can also actually be a bit harder than you expect to run the test because there are a lot of transit dependencies given all. For instance, with all of the various label libraries which actually require other packages or programming language to be installed on the system. Having a single self-contained test system to actually make sure that all can be regularly and thoroughly tested should be a good way to help for actually ensuring the quality of the contributions. Now, the funding structure for all has also undergone a bit of a shift. Historically, we've just directed everybody who's interested in financially supporting the old project to the maintainer, Bastions, personal GitHub sponsors and Lima pay accounts. Now, earlier this year, Bastion has created the Lima pay org mode team account, which means that you can actually now support the org project as opposed to the person being the org project. Currently, this just distributes donations between Bastion, Equal, and myself. However, the idea is that as the active contributors for the org project, um, come to over time, the list of people on the team can be changed as make as seem sensible. The hope here is that it will simplify both how easy it is to actually financially support the old project as well as how easily people contributing to your project um, can be supported. So if you're interested in supporting your project, well there's never been a better time than now to have a look at this and definitely believe you might else you might be interested to know. Hopefully this leads to a healthier funding structure that will scale better into the long term um, and thus be able to support the work that happens with org. Now the project itself has of course also seen quite a bit of development over the past year. We've had about 800 comments from 80 contributors. Along the way these comments have been a lot of polishing quality of life improvements and also quite a few new features. Now, I haven't got nearly enough time to go through this exhaustively, so we're just going to go through a quick highlight meal. Um, there's a collection of export improvements um, from things like which affect all export backends, like including remote content um, and adding new things like DLI links and support from JPT org files, as well as a whole lot of export backend specific changes. For example, quite a few backends, I've mentioned the latest one here, but also others like, such as TextInfo, have now got in rich support for various types of attributes and objects. Um, the HTML backend has had a few things boost up, and well, if you want to see the full list, just take a look at the release notes. We've also seen a similar collection of improvements with the Babel backends. Um, once again, this is scattered, or what? Well, can be split into two sets of changes. There's some which affect all of Babel essentially. Uh, for instance, the new syntax of parsing, the raw content of code blocks, or the changes with Nova. For example, Nova Prefix is a new option that can be used. 
and you can um, also a collection of back end specific changes. So asking about a brand new L or enhanced return capabilities with the OB Python library. And then of course, as before, a whole collection of more changes which you can find in the release notes. Last but by no means least, there have been quite a few changes within the rest of all. So this is, yeah, once again, far too many things to list, but it's things like improving filing, capture templates, image preview sizing, clock field settings, agenda tweaks, and, well, a whole lot more. Um, it's basically, the, es the essence of what's here is a lot of little changes which just for those particular use cases um, in ways that I don't think anybody's going to be um, seeing the effect of all of them, but I think most people should at least find one or two things um, which actually improve their own usage. Now, these are the sort of the sorted, uh, those are the minor improvements, but there are also some major ones, uh, and one in particular, citations. So, I think this has been at this point over a decade in the making, but Org finally has first class support for citations. And I have to say, it is marvellous. Um, it is up to after the label, I think it is, can I say, but it's actually worth the wait. I think out of the various options you've got now, for example, all the way that um, Van Gogh and Mark Powell of Weiss do it, Org has a fantastically succinct and flexible syntax for citations. Um, which scales really well for all sorts of different use cases. Additionally, on the backhand side of things, we've now got a generalized way for handling citations, which has been quite helpful for the, uh, I think I can say, rather rapid development of multiple citation backends for org. Um, yeah, and I think this is fantastic really seeing how quickly org has gone from having no support for citations at the start of this year to what can be described as a wonderfully rich uh, and flexible support with well, multiple backends for citations. Um, I think something that people may be proud of, and it's been a fantastic contribution for everybody involved in this process. Okay, so we've had features. There have also been a whole lot of quality of life improvements. Once again, Many more than I can reasonably mention here, so I'm just going to flip through a few of them. Um, a few big ones though, Eagle is responsible for three lovely developments with Org, one of which is Org Fold. So this is a generalization of the way the content is folded in Org. And I think a lot of people actually underestimate how much can be folded in Org. It's not just another paper, it's, it's headlines, code blocks, lists, um, environments, all sorts of things can actually be folded in Org. And the introduction of org, org fold is important for two reasons. One it is that it has allowed for text property based folding, which in Emacs versions less than um, 29 has a huge difference in performance, which is particularly apparent with larger files. The second significant thing about this is that it now actually provides a more general way to actually describe changes to the folding structure. So before, there was direct modification of SEO domains, scatter power block um, code base. Now we have a much more organized system where we use all fault to say what is and isn't folded and to manage the state of all of that, which is, I think, just from a sort of design, sort of project design approach, a much better system. We've also got the all and cash by evil. Uh, this it's actually something which was discussed quite a while ago, but has somewhat stored during the, uh, due to the difficulty of cache validation. It was like a tremendous amount of into this, and has improved to the point where we've now actually been able to enable this by default. So what this basically does is it records lots of information about the structure of the old document and allows for well, with the public modifications that he was also made throughout the all element library to use this information to speed up various operations based on the walks and documents and text stream. And so this has been quite stable to scattered all over the place. But for, for example, for libraries or anybody who's um, wanting to quickly map over all elements, is all element cache map, which now provides a much much faster 
God's way to Nakabu or evil elements in the document. This also ties into the third main speech of Miho, which I like to mention, which is all persist. So this provides a method of persisting values across Emacs sessions, basically saving them to file somewhere and loading them. Now this works for ES values and also works for files which may be used sort of with the improved capabilities for remote files and exports. This has also been used with the old element cache data. So now you've got a mess of old file and you open it once and that data can be saved to from maybe all kind of cache to all persist. And the next time you load this file in another Emacs session, we can just start with the cache data instead of having to construct everything from scratch, which is quite nice. Once again a change which much like the other ones we will see more impact in larger files, but a very welcome one everywhere. Now with remote files there's also been the beginning of the big record with all to improve the approach we have to uh, safety. So in this case previously, or we would have unconditionally download all of the remote files that saw sort of reference, and now it's actually going to maintain a list of sort of safe resources and point to when it's surprised by something and to look at where it should just down this over this one resource, but the whole domain is safe um, and if you have options. We're also going to probably see a similar approach extend to, for instance, with surveillance execution in the future. Okay, bug fixes. We must have been not to mention that along with all of the features and quality of life improvements, there has been a huge pile of bug fixes. Um, yeah, I think the best way to actually get a look at this would be to look at the release notes or maybe even the actual comment log. Um, but you could also just take my words and say that they have been a horror um, over the past year. So it's just the code base, I think, is just gradually getting into better and better shape. Asynchronous session validation is, I think, possibly the final quality of life improvement I want to mention. Um, this came out in the year just with OB Python, and it's been delayed because it can't actually make it work. We have required some fundamental changes to the way that OB client works. Now it's been implemented with since seen support extended to OBR and hopefully we'll see more languages join this list in the not too distant future. And I guess one bonus, um, which I've talked on just before, is it's now more convenient than ever to actually specify the um, permissions for tabled files. Previously you had to give it a list of expressions which be evaluated, now you can give it directly up to form instead of being a list of expressions that produces an integer representation of the octal and permissions, or you can use LS style um, RWX and dashes, or you can just uh, chmod, um, I want to be able to execute this as the user, which will do a, basically modify the default permission to add that capability. All right, so that's the old project itself, but there's also the whole ecosystem. So, what have we got here? Well, a whole bunch of different class and or personal knowledge base uh, type projects. One of which is LogCSATS and the online open source um, to the cluster, which supports both Markdown and also all mode as a first class format. Then, of course, we have all the learn, which provides a zero cast and built directly onto the form within Emacs. Uh, both of these I've seen considerably interesting over the past year. Moving on to visuals, the uh, has produced a lovely uh, another lovely uh, package in the form of all modern, which just spruces up the visuals of all documents and seems to be quite well received um, generally since its release. Building on top of the citations from earlier, um, Andreas Simoy, apologies for pronunciation, um, has produced the wonderful Cyberproc org library, which, if you're not familiar, um, allows the capabilities of the citation style language which has now become something which is quite widely supported to be used for all citation exports. Um, this means that you've got access to, I think at this point, is it thousands or tens of thousands of all different bibliography and citation formats, which is yeah, obviously a huge boom to all citations. Lastly, just to be slightly critical, I'm actually going to mention the Neolim org mode project. Uh, because I think this really shows the interest in all this, the format um, beyond just Emacs. And I think I haven't gone into it too much here, but there has been quite a lot of development with external tools, um, 
Make his deal for it. Clearly, we've done um, quite a few things right. Um, and so, I think it's interesting to see the interest that exists outside of the US, even without all the lobby tooling we've built, um, just out of appreciation of the format and its potential. Speaking of the format, though, we've also seen three new parsers on the scene this year. Um, we've got one in JD and Haskell, and another one for Tree Sitter. The last one, I think, is currently the least capable, but also potentially the most interesting in terms of what possibility it allows for. Okay, so that's what I'm um, a quick speed run through some of the developments over the past year. What's coming next? So there's been quite a lot of work done with the org syntax document. In fact, they are completely written it. And we have now taken it up to actually actually describe the way that the org format is as an org 9.6. Now um, I think this is quite an important document uh, for the growth in parser tools to help actually ensure that the way that external tools um, process org is actually in sync with the way that org mode does. I, mean, I think it's worth doing everything you can really to avoid the sort of implementation drift that we've seen with Markdown. It's just I don't want to anything near that. Um, this is also quite good for the org form in itself because in the process of going through this sort of effort, it uh, brings attention to irregularities in the syntax which you might want to resolve, um, and as well as helping the robustness of org mode itself. So ultimately, this is to anybody's benefit, really. Um, it's also my personal hope that this might actually get to the point where we consider submitting this as a um, text format to the Internet Electronic Task for, uh, engine, oh, sorry, Internet Engineering Task Force um, as a new text format. So that would be quite nice. The old book itself has a layer on top of the mailing list uh, called Wolf, developed by Bastion, and that's about to have another major release. So, what this is going to do is improve the um, ease of which we can actually monitor what's going on with the mailing list. Um, so, this is where people have patches, bug reports, or other types of things raised on the mailing list. Um, it's a nice way to collect the status of those and put them all in one place. So, it improves the list improve the ease of which the org mode project can be managed, which is always quite nice to see. There's also been, to jump back to the actual, which is mentioned by the side of this presentation, we have got the instruction of engraved faces to native export. Now, what's interesting about this is that it actually uses Emacs as a native font block um, and allows for processing that in a generalized way to different output formats. So at the moment, this is just integrated with Oxalate X that contains the functionality needed for HTML and ASCII, and it could also be extended to other formats like OVT. So we could potentially have the full syntax highlighting based on Emacs exported to, well, really all of the organic backends, except I suppose the plain text ones like Markdown. Um, and I think from both the capabilities perspective, because I think really font block uh, in Emacs from the has made the most sense to blow. Basically, everything else they can use out of the water, whether it be listings, minted, or um, other efforts. Um, and also, from a consistency point of view, um, this could be quite a nice development. Already, now, this talk is this year, uh, and, and I think uh, you all may have guessed this is very much tied into my work with this month, in all which started, I think, a bit over a year ago. And so, if, as you all have agreed, I'm sure you've noticed that there haven't been as many posts as of late. Now, this isn't because my interest in this month in Orc has been um, diminishing, simply it's a little consequence of an evaporation of my free time. However, this month in Orc is still um, going to stick around. The only change really is that the title is going to be, probably continue to be, a bit more aspirational and descriptive uh, in the near future. We'll see how this goes. Thanks for listening to this overview of the state of the world at the moment, and hopefully I'll see you next year.